The first step is going to be downloading Android Studio, and I guess I will just um, I'll post the any links that I go to in chat. So if anyone wants to follow along with me, they can. Um, so you can go to um, Android.com. Here's the website. It's very bright and blinding. They don't have dark mode enabled by default. That's concerning. Um, but here's here's the link where you go to get this. Um, and uh, you just download it. And um, I'm I'm doing this on Windows. Um, you may notice the background. This is a Linux VM that I'm going to be running some tools off of later, but this is installing on Windows. Um, so make sure when when you do this, uh, whoops, I clicked out of it. Um, make sure you have this Android virtual device checked. That's the most important component for what we're going to be doing because that's how you get your actual emulator. Um, just follow the prompts. It extracts everything and installs. It's a pretty quick install. Um, so here is if you were going to be um, developing an Android application, this is where you would go. You would start a project, and you would start with a template most likely, and you'd start writing code and so forth and so on. But we don't need any of that because we're not actually developing an Android app. All we care about is the virtual device. So go to More Actions, Virtual Device Manager, and then you want to create device and here is where you start actually building the device that you want and you have a lot of options out there you can build pretty much any kind of android phone you want um it really doesn't matter the only thing for some of the some of the stuff that um i'm planning on doing in the future i would not get one that has the play store enabled uh, i can cover that in more detail later but they're specifically ones that have the play store that uh, there are some protections enabled there that make it kind of hard to deal with for some of the like more hackery type things that we're going to do later so um i will select a pixel 5 because why not it really doesn't matter um, and now you have to select the um, the version of the operating system, the version of Android that you want to run on the device. And I usually do API level 28. And pretty much any of these will likely work. Um, 28 is just one I've used a lot, so I'm fairly confident that it'll be reliable and won't have any issues. The only thing that I would say is with... Um, it was either Nougat or the one before Nougat. Um, they changed, or maybe it was the one after. I don't know. But right around Nougat, they made a lot of changes to like the security of how Android does things, which made a lot of things that hackers and people pretending to be hackers for the good guys... Um, want to do and made a lot of those things a lot more difficult um and because of that a lot of apps by default will not run on versions of android earlier than nougat it's a good idea to pick one that's be like more recent than nougat so um i'm gonna go with pi uh i didn't realize i had already done this but you would typically need to like how all these it has that download button next to it you typically need to download that first it's like i'll go ahead and download q just because all right so it finished downloading that um, image so now you see i have q it doesn't have the download next to it anymore because we already downloaded it but i'm going to use pi which is level 28 and after you download it um, you need to select it that that's kind of they don't make that super intuitive that after you download it, you can't just go next and keep going. You have to actually like select the one you already downloaded. Hit next. Um, and now you can name it whatever you want. I usually just leave it whatever the name is because that 
describes it. So if I have multiple, I know if I have multiple um, ABDs installed, I can know which one is which just based on the name. Um, and you don't really have to do anything with the settings here. Um, you can, like, if you want to make it start in landscape mode, you can, you, stuff like that, but I don't really care. Um, so I'm just leaving all that as default. I'm going to finish. And now you see in the device manager, you have this um, Pixel 5 API 28. And you can just click the play button, and it will launch the emulator. And then <laughs> Vanguard anti-cheat software is detected. Okay, that's fine. Valorant messing up everything again. Shocking. <laughs> but it's fine. I've, I've gotten that error before, and it never has caused any problems, so I'm just going to ignore it. So you will notice that if you do this, um, the phone is a little bit laggy and a little bit slow because it's... An, an emulated device, it's virtual, so it's running on top of the operating system of your actual PC. So things are a little bit slower than when you're actually using a physical device. But it works fine. Like you can go into the the menu, you can open apps, you can open a web browser. It works just like any regular phone. So that's your your device you can poke and play with all you want um but you may remember that when i launched this i launched it right here from the device manager i typically don't launch it that way because you can also launch it from the command line which gives you a little bit more options there are some command line flags you can run to that allow you to do some other things that you can't do just from running it from the user interface. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to close all the way out of Android Studio. And just a reminder in case anyone is wondering what this background is, this is a Linux VM. I'm not actually doing anything with right now. I will do something with that later. But that um, emulator that I just downloaded, that's on my Windows desktop machine. So if you're on Windows, nothing is different about what I just did from what you could do on your own PC. So first, you have to know where, like, what directory to look for to find all the Android stuff. So that's going to be um, in your user directory. Um, go into app data, local... Android SDK, I think, I'm pretty sure that's it, uh, yeah. All right, so um, this directory is where you're going to find all your tools um, for the Android Studio, um, and kind of two main directories to keep in mind where things that you'll probably use in the future, platform tools, that has some useful things platform tools and emulator are the two main directories that you'll probably need access to um, when dealing with the emulator for the purposes that we'll have most likely so um, now that we're in this app data local android sdk emulator directory now you'll see this emulator.exe so that is what actually runs the emulator, like you might guess. So the first thing I need to do is I need to know, can y'all read this? I just realized this might be kind of small. Better? Better. All right. <clears throat> so back to have emulator.exe. Um, now the first thing we need is the name of our ABD. The ABD is the, what does that stand for? And Android Virtual Device. Yeah, that's it. Um, so the ABD is Android Virtual Device. So when we went through that um, menu where we set up our device and downloaded the operating system and uh, did that, that was creating the ABD. 
and you can create as many of those as you want. Until you run out of hard drive space on your PC, you can have as many AVDs as you want. And when you run this, why did that just do an error? Oh, S, AVDs. Okay, <clears throat> curse of the live demo, um, typos. So if you run dash list AV dash AVDs, then it will list all of them that you have installed on your computer. Right now, I only have one because that's the one we just set up a minute ago. But if I had gone through and set up 20 of them, there would be 20 of them listed right here instead of just that one. So now I'm going to run emulator.exe dash avd and then that name that was listed. You can copy and paste that. It'll be much easier, but I didn't because I'm dumb. <clears throat> so that is all you need to, to actually run the um, emulator from the command line. And um, there are other flags that we'll get into later. I don't need to do that right now, though. Um, so I'll just run this, emulator.exe dash abd, and then the name of your abd. Hit enter. And Vanguard is bitching at me again, but I don't care. <clears throat> so there we go. I have my Android emulator running from the command line. 